That sweet sauerkraut juice gets me in the mood to tear into some German tools. Today I'll rip apart this Metabo grinder and see what you get when you drop some serious coin on a Metabo tool. This is a W8-115 quick release grinder. And I'll put it through the same cutting tests as the Hercules, DeWalt, and $10 Harbor Freight grinders. I got the DeWalt grinder as a test sample a while ago, but I bought all the other grinders here with my own money. I'm not going to show every part of the other grinders because I already did that in other videos. I'll put links in the description. I'm going to start with the cutting test this time because it showed a feature of this grinder I did not even know it had. When I really pushed the grinder to try to get it to stall, the wheel stopped spinning but the motor kept turning. That's because there's a clutch mechanism built in. Otherwise, the Metabo had no trouble cutting through this angle iron. It's rated at 8 amps, and the amp meter shows it does deliver that. As expected, it cut through this no problem, and it bogged down less than the 7 amp DeWalt and Hercules. The $10 grinder struggled with this test and stalled more than once. I ran the Metabo, DeWalt, and Hercules without any accessories, and there is not a huge difference in vibration. All three are pretty smooth. The body of the Metabo is a little fatter because of the more powerful motor. I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time around. Instead of going through each piece as I take it apart, I'm going to pull the whole thing apart, then we will go through the interesting parts inside. Once these screws are out, I should be able to pull off the gear case and pull out the motor rotor. I have to remove a clip here on the lever and take the lever off so that I can get to the last screw holding the gear case in place. Now I should be able to pull the whole rotor assembly out. Let's start at the back here. The Metabo uses a Nexans brand cord. That's a French company. It's a 16 gauge SJ cord. The fact that it only says SJ tells us that this uses a thermoset rubber jacket. It's junior service, that's what the SJ stands for, which is a hard service rated cord. Some cheaper tools use SJT cords, and the T means that it has a thermoplastic jacket, something like, oh, PVC usually and cheaper tools. SJ cords are more flexible and low temperatures. They're just tougher in some ways than SJT cords, so there is nothing wrong with this cord. The Metabo has an 8 foot long cord. The DeWalt is only 6 feet. The Harbor Freight Hercules is also 8 feet. I like the longer cord better, so I'm glad to see an 8 foot cord. Here's the cord protector on the Metabo. This helps prevent the cord from kinking over really sharply and getting damaged. It's not quite as beefy and flexible as we see on the other two grinders. It looks to me like it might be nitrile rubber. I had to come down into my basement work area because it is freezing in the garage right now. Here's the switch. It's a Marquardt brand. That's a German company, so this is a name brand switch. The Hercules also uses this same brand. We see a boot here to help keep out debris. That's good to see. The connections are different on this than the others. The other ones have screw-on connections for the main power leads. This one uses a push-in connection design where a little spring-loaded tab in there holds the wire once you push it in place. I feel like a screw would be a better type of connection, but maybe there's a reason they're using this that I'm not thinking of. They did take the time to solder the ends of the wires so there aren't strands going everywhere. That's good to see. This wire going to the windings on the other grinders is held together with just a simple push-on spade connector, so the Metabo here is not really any better or worse in that respect. Head a little bit farther up the chain and we have the brush holders. All three of these use a stamped brass brush holder that is decently beefy. I measured between 0.7 and 0.75 millimeters on all three of them, depending on where you're measuring. Some cheap tools I've taken apart had really flimsy brush holders that would deform just taking the brushes in and out. All three of them also have a coiled spring brush retainer, which is a good feature. It keeps nice, consistent pressure on the brushes as they wear. One of the brushes on the Metabo also has this little copper plug, which I believe is a warning feature to let you know when the brush is almost worn out. There's this same feature on the DeWalt, uh, but the Harbor Freight does not have it. 
Here are the brushes out of all three of them, the Metabo, DeWalt, and Harbor Freight. And right off the bat, we can see they are all made the same way. They have a braided wire lead and a push-on spade connector. The DeWalt does have a tiny piece of heat shrink tubing that the other two don't. We can also see that the brushes are very similarly sized between the three grinders. And if you watched my last video where I tore apart the DeWalt and the Hercules, you know that I use some very scientific methods to determine how hard the brushes are. That includes scratching them with a pick and rubbing them on some paper to see how easily the material rubs off. What I found before is the DeWalt brushes are definitely harder than the Harbor Freight Hercules brushes. I did those same tests on the Metabo and I found these brushes are in the middle. They're harder than the Hercules, but they are not as hard as the DeWalt brushes. Generally, harder brushes will last longer, but there are some other things to take into consideration, like coefficients of friction, heat generation, and wearing the commutator. The wires leading to the field winding here are thicker on the Metabo. That's no surprise because this is an 8 amp grinder and the other two are 7 amps. But this is set up a little bit differently than the others. The Metabo has these connections here that the other two do not have. And they are some meaty connections. It looks to me like what they've done is used a crimp on spade connector with a very nice heat shrink sleeve over it. And we can tell it's a nice one because we see this hot melt sealant coming out. So what this does is not only seal the connection from the elements, but it also kind of glues it together and reinforces it. All the parts of the body itself are made of PA6 GF30, so nylon with 30% glass fibers. That is a totally appropriate choice for this type of tool. It's the same material that the other two grinders use. Only on really cheap tools do we see other things like ABS. And they did not skimp on the material in most of the parts. There is plenty of it here in the body. This is nice and stiff. This cover part here is a little flimsier, but I guess it wouldn't be under the same kind of forces, so I can see why they decided to make this not quite as heavy duty. Taking a look at the windings, and we can see a nice feature here. They're gray because they've been coated in epoxy. What that does is basically reinforce the windings and help keep vibration from wearing through the insulation or breaking a wire and causing a failure. The windings on the DeWalt and the Hercules are also coated in epoxy like this, but we've seen on a lot of other cheap tools they skip this step. Here we have the rotors out of all three of them, the DeWalt, the Metabo, and the Harbor Freight Hercules. We also see on all three of them some significant balancing marks. That's not a surprise because all three of them run pretty smoothly. All three of these use epoxy to reinforce the connection between the windings and the commutator. That's nice to see and that's something that's skipped on a lot of cheaper tools. We can see on the Metabo, they also went to town with epoxy and fully reinforced all the windings on this end of the armature. All three of these rotors have also been dipped in resin and baked to help secure the windings. We can see the resin pretty clearly here on the Metabo. It's this yellowish material. Over on the other end of the rotors, we can see some additional details. The DeWalt uses epoxy up here to help secure everything. The Metabo is relying on that resin dip we were just talking about. And on the Harbor Freight Hercules, they did things a little differently. The entire rotor has been tightly wrapped in this cord and then dipped to help secure everything. So all three of these are using different methods to try to accomplish the same goal. Hold the windings together to prevent vibration from causing damage. I had to go onto Amazon and buy this uh, extra small bearing puller to get the bearing here off the back of the rotor. And I'm glad I did because this shows some very interesting attention to detail. Before I pulled the bearing off, this is what I could see. We have the size 626, no brand name, and we can see it's a shielded bearing. Generally in a grinder, I would like to see a sealed bearing, because on a shielded bearing, there's no connection between the shield and the inner race. So this is an entry point for dust. And by definition with a grinder, you're pretty much always grinding something and creating dust but I could see why they only used a shielded bearing, because this sits down inside the housing in a recessed hole, so there's not really any way for dust to get to this side of the bearing and get into that gap. So then I pulled the bearing off with my new puller and flip it over and look what I found. They specced a bearing with a seal on the other side, 
and this makes total sense. The bearing sits on here like this. Uh, debris and abrasive dust could get past this shield here and get to the bearing, but it's sealed on this side so that dust can't get into the bearing and wear it out. One thing that's not so great is we don't have any brand name on this. We just have markings showing what size it is and the fact that it has a shield and a seal on the other side. Being that this is an expensive top shelf tool, I'd like to think they spec a good brand, but without that information, we just don't know. Both of the other grinders use the exact same bearing, CW brand, and it's fully sealed. CW is a Chinese company, but it's not one of the super generic ones. It's one of the more reputable ones that has technical facilities and factories outside of China and contracts with well-known companies like Bosch and the automakers. It would be nice to see a real name brand bearing here, like an SKF or something, but you could do a lot worse than CW. Up at the front of the rotor, we have another unbranded bearing, but I am happy to see it's also sealed. Looking at the fan, and it is glass fiber reinforced nylon, but it's a slightly different formulation. This is PA66 versus the PA6 in the rest of the grinder. They're just a little bit different formulas and they have slightly different qualities. The fan here is a very detailed injection molding, and it's a directional fan. All three of these have directional fans, which makes sense because a grinder only spins one way, and a directional fan can more efficiently move air. Take that picture of your family off the wall and replace it with a photo of this, because this is art. Looking at the gear cases, on the quality of the casting and the machine work, the Hercules is good. When you step up to the DeWalt, it's a little bit finer on the machining and the casting work. And when you go to the Metabo, it's just incredibly nice. This is a very complex piece with a lot of detail work here, and it all looks great. A very little machine work is needed on this, but what there is, is nicely done. There is a design difference here. On the Hercules and the DeWalt, there is a seal in here to help keep grease from migrating into the motor. The Metabo does not have that seal because they used a tight tolerance fit here between the housing and the bearing. So they're relying on that tight fit to prevent the grease from getting out. Speaking of grease, let's take a look at what all three of these use. If you remember in some of my other videos, the cheap tools I've taken apart use a basic cheap axle grease type lubricant. The Hercules has something that kind of reminds me of Super Lube brand synthetic grease. Over here we have this dark grease, which is a molly grease, that's fine. The Metabo grease on first blush might look like the cheap stuff, but it's definitely not. It has a lower viscosity, the consistency is different, and it doesn't have that pungent smell that you get with a cheap conventional grease. This seems like something synthetic to me. Here on the Metabo, we see an INA brand needle bearing that's made in Germany, so that's a name brand bearing. This supports the shaft that goes through the gear. And on some cheaper tools, we've seen cost cutting where they don't use a bearing, they just use a bushing here. Over on the Hercules, we also have an INA brand needle bearing, but it's made in China. The pinion and gear use straight teeth on the Metabo versus spiral cut bevel gears on the others. So why'd they go straight here? Well, it could have to do with the thrust forces created by spiral cut gears, or maybe another reason I'm not thinking of. You might kind of have a knee jerk reaction and say strength, but in many cases, spiral cut gears will actually be stronger based on some variables. Take a close up look at the gear or the pinion on the Metabo and it's very smooth, no machining marks here. That's because these are powdered metal parts on the Metabo versus fully machined parts on the other grinders. So what are some of the reasons people use powdered metal parts? Well, you can make complex shapes more easily than machining in some cases, and you get precise control over things like tooth profiles. You can also have metal mixes or even other non-metal materials mixed into the metal that you cannot get with regular alloys. In this case, my guess is the combination of the shape of the part, the teeth they wanted, and the material qualities made it more economical or easier to do it by powdered metal versus machining. When I opened up the gear case, I found these two plastic sheets in between the cover here and the gear case. At first I thought they were for sealing purposes, well, but then I thought, well, there's already an O-ring here helping keep the grease in the gear case. 
So then I thought maybe they were serving as shims, helping set the contact pattern between the pinion and the gear. But then I thought, well, normally you wouldn't use plastic like this for that. You'd use metal for a shim in that application. So I looked them up on the Metabo parts diagram, and it says they are simply a gasket. Hopefully this comes through on the video, but I can clearly see the contact pattern here on the teeth of the gear, and it looks pretty good. It's right around the center of the tooth. It's not too far in or out or too high on the tooth. I guess I'm just a little bit old school here because I'd like to see cast metal instead of the fiber reinforced nylon they have here on the cover plate. But Metabo is not the only company that does this, so I know it does work. Up at the front, we have a fully sealed bearing, which is good to see because up here, it's exposed to a lot of abrasive grinding dust. And this one does have a brand name on it, CW. So it's the same Chinese company we see in the other two grinders. Guys, I'm not doing Patreon, so this channel is 100% supported by YouTube ad revenue. But there are two easy ways you can support this channel. First, subscribe. With YouTube's new policies, having more subscribers really does matter. So hit that subscribe button down below. Second, share these videos on forums or anywhere else there are people who might like them. Here's how you adjust the guard on the Metabo. There's this nice beefy lever. It's spring-loaded and it engages holes on the guard that lets you choose multiple positions. This looks like the clutch mechanism that allows the uh, disc to stop spinning if you put too much pressure on it. It looks like it's just held in with a threaded nut here, so I'm going to try to take that off and see if we can take a better look at it. I opened up the clutch mechanism, and it's simpler in here than I expected. The main shaft is splined, and the gear is sandwiched between this collection of splined washers. But the gear does not have splines. So when you tighten down the nut here, the gear is clamped in between all these washers. But if you really load up the grinder, the gear will overcome the friction from the washers and start to spin on the shaft. And when the gear is spinning free from the shaft, that basically disconnects the the grinding disc from the motor so the disc stops spinning. So this clutch basically offers benefits in two different scenarios. First, if you overload the grinder like I did in the cutting test, this clutch will slip instead of stalling the motor. Second, if you get the disc stuck in something, the clutch mechanism will slip instead of the grinder kicking back. After I got this all apart, check out what I found, MG. That stands for Mini Gears. That's a company started in Italy that specializes in making gears and powdered metal parts. So we have a name brand part here. Here are the gears out of the other two grinders. This is the Hercules, this is the DeWalt. These are both fully machined gears. We can clearly see the machining marks. They're both well done. Uh, the machine work is a little bit cleaner here on the DeWalt. I'm not going to say anything about the handle here because this is not the original handle. I don't know what this came off of, but it's not from a Metabo tool. I put marks here on the main shaft and the rotor so we can check the gear ratio. One, two, three, right about 3.5 to 1. So that gear ratio shows us why bearings are so important in a tool like this. This grinder claims the output maxes out at 10,000 RPM. If it's really spinning that fast, that means the motor rotor would be spinning at about 35,000 RPM. That's why you need good bearings. The Metabo's quick adjust guard mechanism is pretty simple to use. Just hit the lever and move the guard to where you want it. The DeWalt also has a quick adjust guard mechanism. You can see the holes there for the adjustment. The Hercules grinder is a little bit different. It uses this clamp mechanism. Speaking of the guards on these, I measured the thickness of all of them, and the Metabo is the beefiest at about 1.8 millimeters thick. They're all stamped steel. The DeWalt is about 1.5 millimeters, and the Hercules comes in at 1.4 millimeters. The Metabo here has this quick release nut, and I gotta say, so far, I like it. Here's how you tighten it up. You hit the button here to lock the spindle, then you tighten the nut down by hand, then you grab the disc and tighten it up a little more. 
Now when it comes to replacing the disc, the clutch mechanism built in here comes into play again. I can't show you exactly how it works because I don't have the grinder assembled and working. But let's say you want to change the disc. You have the grinder running, you turn it off, but before the blade has stopped spinning, you hit the lock mechanism that engages the clutch and knocks loose the nut so that you can remove it by hand. This flange is made of powdered metal, and this is an example of a part where using powdered metal really makes sense. Look at all the details here in this. Machining this would take a lot of work, and that equals expense. With a powdered metal part, you stamp it in a die, send it through the heat treatment process, and you're done. So let's talk prices and warranties. I paid $10 for this Harbor Freight grinder, which you can see I burned up in another video. It only has a 90-day warranty. I paid $40 for the Hercules, and it also only has a 90-day warranty unless you buy the extended coverage. The DeWalt retails for about $60 and has a 3-year warranty. The Metabo sold new for about $115 to $130, and it also has a 3-year warranty. So, which should you get? Well, I think it depends. Personally, I would skip this $10 grinder unless you're only doing really light duty stuff or you just want multiple grinders so you don't have to switch the wheels. The Hercules and DeWalt are both big steps up in power and build quality. The DeWalt has a nicer guard adjustment and a longer warranty. All three of these are made in China also. On the Metabo, you get further refinement and improvement in the build quality, some really nice attention to detail, more power, and some nice features like the clutch and the quick release mechanism. Plus, you get a tool made in a first world country if that matters to you. You can really see where that extra money is going in the Metabo. I think all of these have their place. I'd skip the cheapest one, but from there it depends on your budget and what you want. Thanks for watching, hit that like button down below, and please subscribe.